Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. It's Thursday, July 9th, 2020. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. And we're going to talk a little bit deeper about tape reading today and tape reading and how it can be combined with volume because you really can't have one without the other. I think one of the best books that explains it is Tape Reading and Market Tactics, which was written in 1931. Uh, a lot of the principles in there are outdated, but one that's really powerful, I think, uh, is he talks about something along the lines of, let's say you, a stock is bought at uh, $50, and let's, let's say regular, uh, regular old chart reading or technical analysis, you look at that and you're like, okay, that's resistance. So, so say it went from 40 to 50, and you say, okay, that's resistance up there at 50, and you put all of this weight in bam, that $50 level is where I'm going to say that's the real level. That's the significant level. Well, he brings up a good point in the book and basically he says, well, what if up there at $50, only 100 shares traded? <laughs> it's just like, like that. All of a sudden, you start to think about it differently. He uses the analogy of coats in a store uh, and somebody who owns the store and reading the ticker at the end of the day or their register receipt uh, to see how many coats they sold at $45 versus how many coats they sold at $50. And if at $45, they sold a thousand of them. <laughs> and then at $50, they sold one. So it's interesting at, uh, how many rookie technical analysts or chart readers that I call them don't take the next step at, uh, and become a tape reader. And a tape reader is really putting these pieces together. There's price action, there's price action across multiple time frames and sectors in the market. Uh, and then you add, you have to add that last piece. What was 50 jackets sold or a thousand jackets sold? I think I used a thousand and, and one, but just to make the example. So what we're actually going to discuss today is we're going to start, we're going to add the volume equation uh, into the price action equation because you really can't have one without the other. And if you really think about what that, that, that um, I don't know if analogy is the right way to word it, but, if you think about it and look at the charts that you watch, and we can actually pull up a chart um, if you want. Take a look at the chart of Roku, where you'd be looking at it, where it keeps hitting a level, keeps hitting a level, keeps hitting a level, and it looks like all the way up here is the resistance level. Let's say 135, because that happens to be where it traded, but it's having a hard time getting through 132. So think about what this knowledge is. If you just look at a chart now, and you're like, what is the real price that that uh, buyers are having a hard time pushing this through, uh, and what is the um, what is the what is the what is the price that if I get in there or if I watch that price as opposed to the price up here where only uh, 50 jackets were sold as opposed to 3,000 were sold here at this level, you're going to be getting in three dollars earlier than other people. You might even be getting out if you happen to see a stock going down where you recognize the real price. Uh, that is the market price, the price that the market is actually trading and is changing hands uh, in, in the biggest volume. That's what you're looking for. Don't do what was taught in a book in 1940, where it just says that high is the most significant level that you have to watch. So it traded all the way up there and once. <laughs> no, only if it had volume, only if a thousand jackets were sold up there and you need to pay attention. So you'll, we do this all the time in the tape reading room and in the boot camp where we talk about what's the real price. What is the actual price that this stock is having a hard time getting through? So we're going to take that and we're going to take that even a step further today where we're going to discuss accumulation, distribution, fuel, and exhaustion. And they have different uh, connotations. So fuel is actually starting a move. It's a large body candlestick with volume. So that's key. That's coming out of a trading range. Exhaustion is after a sustained order flow and after a very recent parabolic move in volume. So parabolic means very fast, quickly, same thing, right? Very fast with a large green or a large red candlestick. And that large red candlestick or large green candlestick after that move has also a monster spike in volume. And from the floor, the trading floor in the New York Stock Exchange, that was called a cleanup print. So in other words, if I was buying a million shares and I had 100,000 shares left and I was the reason that stock was going up or down, meaning I was, I was the biggest natural buyer in that stock or I was the seller and I put that print on the tape, tape reading, that is typically the end of that move because I was the person pushing it in that moment. Somebody else might come in and step in later, but 
more often than not, it's pretty reliable that that cleanup print is exhaustion in that stock. And I purposely labeled them exhaustion, cleanup print, like that kind of stuff, uh, because I want you to visualize the buying pressure has exhausted, the selling pressure has exhausted. So when you combine fuel with exhaustion, you get some pretty good uh, reversal signals at the very least, which I'm going to point out a stock that everybody's trading right now, NEO, uh, where yesterday it had some pretty heavy selling uh, and there were two different exhaustion points. So when you have exhaustion, it doesn't mean you just bail out of a position because that's, that's a short term momentum type indicator. Uh, and what it means is that you, if you were trading in that direction, you move your trailing stop to lock in profits because the situation has changed, which you think about it, that's the difference between chart reading and tape reading. Tape reading, you're acknowledging the situation has changed, which by the way, that's where a lot of traders are holding losses that they should not be holding because they failed to recognize the situation change. So the reason you got into the trade, you have to say to yourself, if this happens and this happens, I'm good. If this happens and this happens, I'm good. But then if that changes, you need to know what you're going to do. You need to take action. And that's part of the stuff that we're talking about here today. So the final two pieces that we're going to take a look at, again, in the context of tape reading, in the context of uh, 1,000 jackets at 45 versus only 100 jackets uh, at 50, we're going to talk a little bit about accumulation and distribution. And we have two, two examples. Uh, and then a couple of people in the, uh, the boot camp actually asked about a stock that um, is it showing distribution now. So it's kind of cool. We're going to have recent examples. We're going to have uh, something that's unfolding now. And we're going to start out with a trade that I called uh, using this method, using the tape reading skills that we have um, on June 22nd. And after we, ma we made the call in the morning, uh, I called out exactly what was going on while the stock was still in a consolidation. But we started to see a heavy increase in volume without the stock advancing. So it already had a pretty good move to the upside, let's say from January all the way up to the beginning of June and into the latter part of June. But then in the latter part of June, we started trading sideways on heavier volume. So I'm gonna show you the screenshot. You'll see the video if you want, you can go back and watch it. It was, I think around the three minute mark where I started talking about it. And I said, something changed in this stock right now. It's still in clear, obvious order flow. It's still clearly going to the upside, but there's a change between price action and volume and something doesn't smell right. And, and, I'm, and I'm not implying anything. I'm, I'm basically saying it changed. I'm basically saying when I say it doesn't smell right, it means if I still want to be long, if I still want to be a buyer in this stock, something has changed to make me say, I'm going to second, I'm going to think twice about that because the price action and volume are not doing what they, what I need for them to see in order for me to still have conviction for the long side. So this video is specifically for everybody in the boot camp who was posting last night into questions. Uh, um, um, about how to read this and specifically about the stock that we're talking about. Uh, by the way, if you like these videos and you find them helpful, absolutely click down um, and subscribe to the channel. That would mean the world to me if you find these valuable. Leave feedback if you have any questions. And if you want to learn how to uh, be with me and trade with me in real time, click down and learn more about the bootcamp as well. So we're going we're gonna to go over to the charts and I'm going to um, illustrate in as, in as clear as possible uh, you can see, so this is DKNG on June 22nd. So what I pointed out here was the fact that obviously the stock had a really, really nice bullish run, quite honest, with the rest of the market, right? Uh, but then in this area here, you can see that the volume started to spike, but price action did not rally. So this was actually a Monday morning video uh, before the week started. And I said, if this stock breaks out, something's going on here where there's a lot of price action here without advancement. And again, remember what we say about what we need to see. We need to see price action and volume being on the same page to continue to have conviction. And by the way, something I want to make sure I point out, these signals in my 20 years of experience are the most reliable on daily and five minute charts. If you happen to be day trading, but for whatever reason, I don't get as clean a signal on the 15 minute chart or the hourly as the daily and the five minute chart. So when or day trading, that's the time frame to pay attention to these things. So you'll see here that I, that I noticed, and especially here, this is like really uh, the biggest example out of everything I'm about to show you. So you can see here clearly volume started to increase from here and price did not increase. And then this day here, a monster spike in volume into what was actually an inside candlestick. So really big day of trading and the price didn't move. 
after, see, this is the big part here, after a sustained move to the upside. So this increase in volume over this week was technically distribution because the stock did not advance while the market actually was kind of in a trading range at that point as well. But we're talking about stock specific here. And what ends up happening is this. So, so let me first talk about what this implies. What we need to see on bigger volume days is an advancement in price or if it's in bearish order flow to the downside. So immediately I said, this is not what we're seeing. So something is changing. And I said, buying a breakout here is not the highest probability trade and it would not shock me if the stock sold off over the next week or so. And, and you can go to the videotape and here's what happened. This is where we left off and here's what happened to the stock over the next two weeks. So this is where tape reading and this is where putting the pieces together of price action and volume give you forecasting ability. And again, nothing is 100% with trading. And I'm going to point out what I mean by that in a second. Um, but in normal market conditions, which obviously this is the normal market condition, but we're stock specific. We called the reversal in the market before it happened, uh, in this stock before it happened by putting the pieces together. So we're going to go to the next one. <clears throat> And the point that I want to get across here is this. If you take a look at JP Morgan, this is not normal volume. So I'm, I'm kind of putting a caveat on everything that we're doing right now because I'm getting asked <clears throat> a lot of questions about um, stuff that is being influenced by the, trillion the $2 trillion stimulus package. I'm going to point out as many things as possible, but you can't take trading in a vacuum. You, you can't ignore the fact that there's a huge bid below the market by the federal government right now, holding up the market in a very um, dire circumstance that we're in right now where, where states are closing down, which quite frankly, in my opinion, we should be because the, it's spreading faster and faster. I understand the economic impact of that and I'm not making light of that at all. My point is from a trading perspective, look at the normal volume in JP Morgan compared to this. Now, I'm gonna get the question, is, is that accumulation in JP Morgan because it's happening after a downtrend? No, this is a massive spike in volume in the financial sector because of COVID right now. This is the same exact thing happening in Boeing, which a lot of people are saying that this is a must too big to fail type of company. So I'm, pull, I'm pulling these out to show you that we're not in a normal environment right now, but what I'm showing you still works from a tape reading perspective because this is the normal volume and this is where we are now. So let's get into uh, what we now know as exhaustion. So if you remember what we said, exhaustion is after a violent parabolic move after momentum with a large volume spike is a cleanup print of that particular momentum move. That's what I want to get across. Exhaustion is momentum. So you can clearly see here in DocuSign, this was uh, July 7th, 2020 where we had a really good clean breakout. This would be considered a breakout of what we call the opening range. A nice momentum move that basically went from 190 to 203. And you can see here clearly a large green body candlestick after this momentum spike in volume and the stock rolls over for $7, $7. Now, the question that obviously comes back is, do you just exit into momentum? And the answer is no. And I say this very, very clearly because you, that might be the first bit of a cleanup print. It might not be the whole thing. So what I teach and what I show everybody in real time is as you do, you move your trailing stop higher in case it's a reversal. But if it's not, you want to give it a chance to continue. In this case here, it was a pretty significant reversal and you would have locked in your profits because you recognize something changed. So the next trade we want to look at is Spotify. And this is actually another one where we had obviously a nice move during the day. And obviously this is in a much longer term uh, move to the upside. And you can see this spike in volume on this candlestick after this momentum. Now, perfect exhaustion. This would have closed on the high and had a much larger candlestick. It didn't, but still we had a nice run to the upside. And this is a good example here. of If you exited here, instead of moving up your trailing stop, you would have lost another two dollars in profit, so gave it back. Nothing wrong with that. This is still a good move, right? Two seventy to two seventy six, basically. Uh, but then it, it went up to two seventy seven, two seventy seven and a half. So that's a good example. But we actually have an even better example coming up, and that's this stock, Neo. So this is also from uh, July eighth of two thousand and twenty. So the stock rolled over, and here we had a big volume spike. So you can see this is the twenty period. Uh, moving average of the volume on the five minute candle. 
So we had a big move to the downside. We had a momentum move here and volume picked up dramatically. So would you say that that was exhaustion? You could say yes, you could say no, but this is why I tell everybody to move a trailing stop in the direction so you book profits in case it's a reversal of that momentum. You can see we actually went sideways and spiked down again. And this is what I meant about perfect exhaustion, where the last candle on the increase in volume is a massive large red or large green candlestick. So you get a parabolic move and a large candlestick. And we actually did, call, I, I actually did call this live uh, in the market in the afternoon. I said, tighten them up. That just, that stock just bottomed out. Uh, and you can see the stock actually re uh, reversed from basically 1222. 1340, which is a big move in a $13 stock. So next we're gonna talk about um, uh, accumulation. So accumulation happens after a sustained downtrend, a big increase in volume that takes place usually over weeks, um, sometimes a little bit longer, but usually over weeks. Uh, and when that happens, the stock usually takes off in the other direction because that's smart money buying as the stock is going down, stopping the stock from going down, maybe just barely breaks through support, volume increases dramatically, and that's accumulation in the stock. And we actually called this <clears throat> in December of 2019, where you could see that CRWD got down to a previous support level. Volume spiked dramatically here, especially, right? Because you can see what it normally did. Um, and then we said this stock is, being, is under accumulation and look for it to reverse. We ended up getting a very clear fuel candlestick. Uh, and now the stock is actually trading much higher. But you can see here, even just this one move here, spotting this accumulation. Number one, you're not short selling because something changed. Number two, you recognize this, you can start to build a position during accumulation and the stock actually bounced uh, $18 uh, over the next week and a half, which is a pretty good move considering it wasn't moving when we made the, the, um, the call based on reading the tape. So the other one we have now is we have FSLY, where the last couple of days, you can see here, uh, the stock, very similar to what DraftKings was doing, we had an increase in volume. So here's what it normally does. And here's what the stock was doing for the last week. And I was saying, hmm, something's changing here in this stock. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on, but I do know that the stock is now churning and not advancing. So I, I, at this particular stage, I said, all right, I'm not looking to be aggressively long this stock, despite the fact that the chart looks perfect. Uh, for a longer term move. So I just decided to step away. Now you can see here, the stock actually bounced out yesterday, which was July 8th, 2020. And it looks like it might test 100. So the point is I'm putting the pieces together, but then you want to see price action follow through. That's a big thing because first you have to recognize what you need to see. You have to recognize if it's still valid, and then you have to recognize if it changed. If it changed, that doesn't necessarily mean you just bail out of the position or just get in with reckless abandon, you still then want to see fuel or exhaustion or something along those lines, where at the very least, you'd want to see the stock do what we call being well offered on heavier volume to validate that. So the stock that we're, we're, we're um, talking about now, um, uh, the button. oh, that might be the last one, uh, which was OSTK, hang on one second here, let me just, So the stock that we were looking at now, which, which brought up the question, uh, is OSTK on a daily chart, where we had this massive spike in volume <clears throat> two days in a row and a reversal. So you can see here, we did have a really good clean move to the upside. And yesterday, uh, let's say this is Tuesday and this is Wednesday, July 7th and July 8th. We had a massive increase in volume. We had a spike, we had a parabolic move, and then we had a reversal uh, in a day that um, was not really uh, that much selling in the market, it kind of went sideways actually, and the market's holding a gap at that point. So is this the start of distribution? Well, you can certainly make a case that this is exhaustion and the next day was distribution. So what does that mean? What does that mean as a trade that you might be looking at right now? It essentially means that you'd be looking at the stock from a perspective, something changed. If you're long the stock from lower levels, you might want to scale out of some of it and or move up a trailing stop loss. The way you would confirm 
distribution is now you would need to go to the higher time frames, and you can see clearly here the stock is still well bid and very well well bid. Um, in order for you to change your opinion on the stock from a longer term perspective, two things would need to happen. And, and when I say change your 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 opinion, your trade bias is this would no longer be valid if the stock goes well offered on the weekly, or if we continue to trade sideways here with heavier volume without the stock advancing very similar to what we saw in DraftKings there. So um, I hope that clears it up. I hope that at least gives you some price action. And really watch the beginning part of that video, especially with how you draw your trend lines, uh, and, and, and more importantly, your, not your trend lines, your support and resistance levels. Because if you use that, that thought process of what is the price that stock is really having a hard time getting through? It might not be that one print that's all the way up here or the one print that's all the way down here. Literally look at the stock, and especially if it's going sideways for a while, you could probably draw a box, and you're going to get in at much better prices than somebody who's just drawing it way up there or way down there because one print traded. And I'm exaggerating, obviously, the one print. Um, but be a pro. Take advantage of what's available in the market and don't do what the lemons are doing. Don't do what everybody else is doing and just say the high and the low, and that's what I'm using. Dig in, go a little deeper. And that's the difference between a chart reader and a tape reader is a tape reader digs a little deeper, builds the argument, and has a better argument to have conviction. So we went over a lot of pieces today. There's a lot to unpack here today, but it's a good question. I'm, I'm really glad everybody in the community brought it up because it's a powerful, powerful move. And even just something as simple as NIO yesterday, if you spotted the first uh, spike in volume and moved your trailing stop down and then spotted the second one <clears throat> where there was a much, much more obvious parabolic candlestick, and you got out at that point, you saved yourself from the stock moving a uh, dollar twenty, a dollar forty against you. Um, pretty powerful stuff. Have a great day, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.